Yes, it's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, and if you've been following, you know that we have discovered dragons absolutely undeniable, and Greg has gone and gone right to the site where we saw where the dragon scales would be, and he found them, and he determined that they are feathers. That made me go back and re-examine some of my earlier work that showed this as muscle. That is not. That is feathers. Now, I have been assured by people that have birds, and they raise them, and that know exactly what I'm saying, that that is no question feathers, and I have the, I'll show you the, the anatomy of feathers and a little bit of technical stuff to go along with it, but these are trees. These are trees. This is enormous. This is the little tips of the feathers, and I don't just have one of these. I, this, this, this is Zion National Park. It is loaded with this type of flowing feathery patterns. Now, feathers, I've been doing a little studying on feathers, a lot of different types of feathers. Now, but you can see what is going on here. This is not your, just your average sedimentary rock. I don't know what you'd even call that, but it's, it's feathers. Let's go with that. Now, uh, and Greg has them, and, and he's shipping them to me. I'll be, I'll have them within a day or so, and um, I'll be doing some some looking into that, and we'll we'll see what we got. Greg's doing fabulous work. He's he's, he's really getting into this, and uh, and we need somebody like that to do this kind of work to get out there and do it because it's not it's not being looked at the way it should by the people that claim to know all these things. Let me just go with that. Okay. This is going to be a little bit tricky, but let me explain. As a mud fossil researcher, I must understand precisely all of the biology, the anatomy, the geology, the, the chemistry, and the construction and, and articulation of all the body parts. So, when Greg went down and found that these dragon feathers were, were right where the scales were that we had expected they would be and he found them in the shape of feathers and I said wow that's fabulous now I went back and looked at some of my work that I had shown as muscles and I said "Ooh, they must be feathers well all of a sudden I realized why I had said that you know this goes back several years that I had cataloged them as muscles. Now, I forgot about pennates. Now, um, this is what, what we're talking about here, feathery muscles. And they are feathers. They say they're exactly like feathers. However, I dis decided there is one way that we can figure out if it's a muscle or it is a feather. And that's sarcomeres. Now, these are pennate muscles. It's derived from the Latin for feather. <laughs> They're very different in shape and size from fusiform muscles, the lawn muscles. Now, they're short fibers. They attach along greater lengths of the bone than fusiform muscles, like your, your, your biceps and things. A good example of these two different types of muscles to be found in the lower leg where we find a lot of pinnate muscles. You see these here? They go between the fibula and the tibia, and they sort of strap them together. Those are these short muscles. And uh, let's see anything else. Let me just see if there's anything else and we'll come back. Hold on. All right, there was nothing more really in that article about these particular pennate muscles. Now, here's the thing though there's also something else in muscles. They're called sarcomeres. Now, what is a sarcomere? A sarcomere is a little plug like looking thing. It almost looks like a a cork in a wine bottle, only it's red and it's, I'll show you, I'll show you some of them. And they are, we find those in the mud fossils too. They don't understand them and they block me off all the geology pages because I say these things. But the sarcomeres, those are the, the muscle fibers. And this is what it says here. Unlike in parallel muscles, pennate fibers are at an angle to the force generating axis. So they're like sideways muscles. And usually insert into a central tendon because of this structure fewer sarcomeres 
can be found in series, resulting in a shorter fiber length. So these, instead of going like running between an arm and an elbow or something and stretching this way, they run sideways between two bones, that type of thing. Now, let's look at something else. All right, now I don't know if I mentioned it, but Greg is sending me some of the dragon feathers. Now, he claims that when, you know, cause the first, first email he sent to me, he was freaking out. He said, they're magical. And I said, well, what the hell does that mean? Well, apparently you put water on them, they turn iridescent. Now, I don't think that would happen with sarcomeres, first of all. Secondly, feathers I don't think have sarcomeres. And sarcomeres are these little plug-looking things. And they're inside of muscle fibers. And I don't think they're just strictly in these long muscle fibers. I think they're in all muscle fibers because that is the device that makes them pull back and forth. So let's look at what they look like in mud fossils. Or they actually agatize a lot, which is they turn spectacular-looking things. Hold on. All right, this is what's in these sarcomeres. That's the, they're from striated muscle. This is a little box, makes this box, which is, makes this little box of that, makes this. Now, when I get it here in the microscope, we should be able to see if it's, if it's uh, sarcomeres or if it's feather. And I don't think feathers have the same thing. Like I said, I hope. We'll find out. Just for your own knowledge, this is how the sarcomeres work. When they're relaxed, they're just nice, and then when they pinch together, they pull together in this H zone, they call it. All right, and this is a microscopic shot, so sarcomeres in their different configurations, expanded and then contracted. I'm pretty sure these are um, sar sarcomeres, and they they petrify in the mud fossil mode and I have blood things I have things loaded with blood too so it's not like they don't come in in, in actual meat formations and that's what they look like and this is the coating around these fibrils and they, they call it fascially it's fascia and it separates them in death as it does in life the same as all my mud fossils why they all come out in bits and pieces of parts and I think these are the sargomeres now, if we see those in the feathers, then it's likely that it's muscle. But I still have some, ex some work to do in the feather arena because this is that feathers are a little new to me. You know, I haven't really studied them well, but I'm, I'm into them pretty good now. So, we'll figure it out, I hope. All right, I've come to the conclusion they have to be feathers. There's no way they're going to have these uh, these. Um, I forget what you have to call them, but the shafts that run through the feathers one after another after another with these feathery patterns. I mean, they're, they're not sar sarcomeres. Sarcomeres run between bones. Those aren't bones. Those are those st structural supports in the feathers. And, and, well, let's look at another shot. All right, now I'm looking at this, and I really can't see specifically without a good microscope, but I'm, I'm of the thought pattern that these are not sarcomeres, first of all. Secondly, there is what they call multi-penates. Uh, let's, let's take a look at that, because there's not strictly just a bone-to-bone -bone penate muscle. There's multi-penates that could actually be what we're looking at is muscle fibers. I don't know. We have to look at this a little deeper. Now, this is the only one that I'm worried about is a multipennate, because we know that they're not uni or bipennates, but the multipennate is a third type of pennate subgroup known as a multipennate architecture. These muscles, such as the deltoid muscle in the shoulder of humans, have fibers that are oriented at multiple angles along the force generating axis. So, I still got to look at it to be positive, but I, I think we're on solid ground with feathers. That's the, at this point. You know, the crazy thing is, the more I look at this, I can't really tell. These could be actually sarcomeres right in this ramus. And then I look and I see ripples in the barbules, and you see it? Those could be sarcomeres too. I have no clue at this point now. I gotta really do some work here. I mean, I always just took it for granted that these things were just structural supports, like pieces of wood. They didn't have any 
any strength to them, but that could be wrong. That could be wrong. I'm seeing something that looks like there's structure in there. Well, who knows? Because these bar these uh, barbules are feeding into there. Are those structures because of the barbules, or do they do something to the barbules and regulate the strength of the support? I don't know. I have no idea at this point. All right, this is where Dra Greg got the the uh, dragon feathers or whatever they are, muscle fibers from. I, they, I think they're feathers. I'm going to go with feathers until we get get a definitive answer on this, and then I don't even know if that'll be definitive. They may be so closely related that um, at this point it'll be very hard to determine the difference. But he did say they had some kind of magical quality where they turn like iridescent when you put water on them. So I'm waiting for them to arrive and, and I'm going to take a look at them in a microscope, see if I can see anything that has any any way to, to have any kind of idea what, for sure one way or the other, or, or at least to guide me some way to make a, a better determination. I thought I had it down pat. Ah, there's no question. Well, see, this is where you, always, you can never stop. And then you, if you make a mistake, you got to say it's a mistake. Let me see if it was a mistake. If it's a mistake, it's a mistake. That's the case. You know, just because you said something doesn't mean you have to stay with it. If it was wrong, it's wrong. That's all.